Christian Dix up next. Christian, good to see you. Good to see you too, sir. I feel like we've known you for a while. We've seen you at Northwest quite a few times over the years. Yeah. How about this exciting senior season? Oh, it's awesome. Um, I'm so blessed to be out there with all my teammates uh, sharing an 8-0 record, you know, first time in a while for Northwest, uh, I think ever. I'm thinking the same thing. I remember Northwest many, yes. many years ago, and we mentioned some of your teammates. Northwest now kind of being thought of as a football school. Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, we're not one of those schools to mess around with. Uh, we we will get after it, and we will do whatever we can to win the game. What do you got to do against Glenn to win that game? Any thoughts about that? Big one tomorrow night. Uh, they, they are starting to run the wing tee offense, so I think we have a little bit of an upper hand where we run the wing tee. You guys had it before well. they did, right? Yes, sir. So you, we you know guys have had do. it for a while now. You guys in Northeast and some other people, it seems like, are starting to get a little bit more in that wing tee also. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that's coming back everywhere now, not just high school, but college and you know, it's starting to come back. It's a great offense to run. How tough was it to learn all the different uh, particular parts of that wing T offense when Coach Woodruff started to work with that offense for you guys? How tough was that? It, it was pretty tough for me, especially because I come in from Cronodal not really knowing much about the running back position. And Coach Bear, Woody, they all did a great job helping explain what to do in certain certain um, plays. So I think they helped a lot. You know, Coach Bear has been there, I guess, at Northwest for a while now. He's done yes, a sir. real good job of sticking in, working with you guys, and being a part of that program. Yes, sir, he has, and he's a, he's a great coach, a great guy, too. Um, he's a good running back coach, and, I mean, I, I'm going to miss him when I'm gone. There's got to be a certain level of toughness to be a running back, too. I mean, talk about that, because you just can't – I've been watching more and more football. It's closer to the field. I've all watched it for years. I've been watching maybe closer now as I get a little older. It's kind of seeing things maybe I missed when I was younger. But, I mean, you got to be pretty tough because you start to run the yes, ball, sir. you break to your right or to your left, I mean, you're thinking, well, I can outrun all these guys. There's a lot of people coming after you. Back. Oh, well, you yes, got to have sir. a certain level of toughness back there. Definitely. And me as a fullback, I'm not really one of those jukers. I like running running into you, just breaking the tackles. Uh, Keenan Scott and Anthony Harding, they're more the jukers running outside. I'm more the running up the middle trying to break free for the first down. And, you know, and do you've got to love the contact that that's the position you're playing, too, a fullback. you got to love oh, that contact. Yeah. Yes, sir, definitely. And playing linebacker really helps a lot as well on the defensive side. I love hitting. And, I mean, I don't really like getting hit, but, hey, whatever it takes to win. I guess it would be almost like if some guy says, I'll give you maybe uh, $10 to run the ball inside, but I'll give you 25 to run it outside. You'd probably take the $10 to run the ball inside. Yes, sir, definitely. Liking that content. And you play linebacker also, right? Yes, sir, I do. It's probably a good transition because you're getting hit, and you turn around and also do some hitting too. So you're probably used to it by the time you get to your linebacker spot. Yes, sir. You've been hit a few times already. Easy conversion for you there. Yes, sir, it is. Uh, I've played linebacker all four years. This is the uh, first year I've really played fullback on offense, playing both ways, and and I think it's an easy transition going back and forth, but uh, linebacker has helped a lot uh, being able to take those hits. You've been there. I guess you've been involved in the varsity program all four years, right? Yes, sir, I have. What has brought about that uh, progression? It's not been just like snap change, not like going from worst to first. You right. guys have progressively gotten better. What do you think it is that Coach Woodruff and his staff have done to allow that transition, that major improvement to take place? Oh, they've done a lot. Um, just from everyday practice going on each day, you know, one, the main focus is just getting better. And every single day, even after the season's over, going into the weight room in the off season, doing whatever we can to be better the next season, that's really pulled us a lot. And Coach Woody and the rest of the coaching staff has done a great job getting us focused for the next season. And after, after it's all it's over. It's been a long way, I guess, for you, too, though, going from Cronoda all the way now with Senior yes, Northwest. Sir. You look back at that, I think you're already sir. considering what it's going to be like when this is gone, too, when you're going to miss it down the road. Oh, I, I am going to miss it. And um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do without football, but it's, How about, I it's heard, been a great – I'm going on the sheet here. I got the sheet. I'm, looking, I'm thinking back to I saw the sheet. They said you may be going to Brevard. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. I actually accepted the other day to play baseball at Brevard. So um, it's going to be very fun playing there. Do you think it's any chance, outside chance, you might put a little football up there too? Oh, uh, that that would be awesome playing uh, both ways there. I know it's extremely challenging, yeah. so it's it's going to be really hard. Uh, if I do, that would be a blessing. If not, that's okay too. 
How's the, uh, the baseball deal working for you? What position will you be playing when you go up to Brevard? I'll be playing outfield, uh, primarily center field. Um, I'm going up on a, on a scholarship, which is really, really awesome for me and my family. Um, helping out any way I can with them. So I think I'm just going to go up there and do whatever I can to help win. Well, Brevard's up near Rosman, right? Up in yes, that sir. area. It's uh, right next to Asheville. Yeah, yes, how do you like, you like it up in the mountains up that way? Looking forward oh, to that, I too? I love it. I love the mountains. Uh, we actually have a little cabin and our family does to uh, get away. So I, I love the mountain aspect. I love, and I don't think the cold weather is going to really be a factor because, I mean, I'm used to it. And it's, it's baseball, Brevard, uh, how is that? I mean, the football, I know it's getting better. They're working on a baseball yes, football sir. program because we know Coach Persley's son, Brock Persley, out of Northeast, he's up there. Coach Persley helped him there too now. They picked up some uh, area Guilford County players up at Brevard. What about the Brevard baseball program? What do you what do you know about them? I know we're, we're getting better each year. Coach McKay is doing a great job of getting yeah. the team where they need to be. Coach and McKay, I think, maybe, in fact, that name kind of rings a little bit of a bell. He might have been in line maybe looking at that UNCG job a couple of years ago. Yes, sir, he was. Uh, he actually came from Carolina and went to take a head baseball coach at Brevard, which is awesome. So we have experience, we have knowledge at that mm -hmm. position, and it's just, it's going to be fun having a... And you're talking center field, going to be locking that position down. Yes, sir. Who's your favorite professional baseball team? Professional baseball team is the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta Braves. Braves all the way. Got yes, you sir. There. Man. What about that? Uh, you got the Shoemaker brothers. You got uh, Colson Everett. Yes, sir. Just a lot of talent on that baseball team coming back this year, too. Yes, sir. Uh, every single one of us will has the potential of playing college ball wow. somewhere. That's good. Good so stuff. I think we're going to have a very good run this year. I, I hope we do. I know we do. And if we stay together as a unit, we'll be, we'll be just Who's fine. Who's your teammate in the outfield last year? I think his arm was a little bit off last year. Could not pitch as much last year. Jackson Belinkus, yes, sir. Mr. Belinkus. Yeah, the first time you see that Belinkus name, what in the world we got here? Mr. Jackson Belinkus. He's, he was looking at Carolina one time, wasn't he? Yes, sir. I think he will go there mm. because he's he's a great guy. And no matter what, he's going to work hard to make sure he'll he'll get to that level. A little injury won't stop him from getting You think that arm is going to be back in pretty good shape this coming season? Yes, sir. Back on the mound for Belinkus, maybe? Yes, sir. I I think so. What about uh, you had, you know, the Blinkus name was an interesting one I had to learn following your baseball team a couple of years ago. Sanders Cuxhausen. How did you get that Cuxhausen yes, name down? I honestly have no idea how they got how they got his nickname down. Uh, he was a great guy. Uh, I think it was my sophomore year when I really met him and saw how good of a guy he was. And he was just a good good team leader. He was one of those guys that you want to look up to and want to someday be like him. He was a good guy to look up. What about Adam Swim? He was like the uh, nuts and bolts and oh uh, that team last year, huh? He like carried the team on his back sometimes. Yes, sir. Uh, he, this guy, oh my gosh. There's so many things you can say about Swimmer, but uh, I know he's at UNCG and I know he'll do great things. I saw him warming up last year in the tournament over at East Forsyth. I think you guys might have played that semifinal round at East Forsyth. And I asked these questions occasionally. I saw a team a few years ago, Virginia came to town for the ACC tournament. Their pitchers were warming up without a ball. They like whipping a towel, the towel whip. Yes, sir. He was warming up in a bullpen, but he was like taking a run and start before he threw the baseball. Yes, sir. Tell me about that, because i never seen that. I always ask, I want to ask questions. I ask something, a run and start and throw the ball in the bullpen in warm-ups. From what he told me, it was just kind of getting the blood flowing throughout the body. You, you, you know, getting warm, not just his arm, but his whole body, because yeah. as a pitcher, you use a bunch of legs while you wind up and throw the ball. So you're using your whole body, not just your arm. So I think that's a good strategy by him, warming up his whole body not just his arm. I often said if I ever have a chance to ask that question, I'll figure out what was going on. But that was a good tournament, too. I'm not sure if you guys got knocked off in the semifinal round, but it's the finals. However, sure. went. But that, that was one game. You guys went in the extra inning game, didn't you? Yes, sir, we did. Because we were in there. We thought this game would be done by us. started about 6 because it was a rain delay. I mean, one of those games. Had to fix the field. But that game went extra innings, and that was a tough one. Yeah, it, it was, and that, it the was team a team of Beach, tell me if I'm wrong, the team of Beach, I think, was Glenn. Yes, sir. And now it you was. need a little payback tomorrow night, right? Yeah. Yes, sir, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, but Definitely. That, that, that was a good tournament you guys were involved in over there, though. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So center field for Christian Dix, running back for Christian Dix, and linebacker for Christian Dix. 
Now, the linebacker, do you feel this linebacker, you're more involved there than on the offense? Or oh, about, the yes, sir. about the same? Yes, sir. Uh, I played all four years at linebacker. I actually got a little lucky my freshman year. Um, our starter, our starting linebacker on JV, he got hurt, and I was second string, and a uh, coach came up to me. He asked me if I knew all the plays, and came in. I said, yes, sir, I know, I know everything, and I go in, make a lot of tackles, and they said, hey, you're you're now the starter. How tall are you? I'm six foot. Six foot? How much weight? Uh, 200 pounds. Ooh, good solid weight, too. Six feet, 200 pounds. Who's the toughest player you've ever gone up against? You've been playing varsity four years. Oh, man. I know you've faced some tough guys, even from your team or another team, the opposition. Toughest guy? I'd, I'd have to say T.J. Logan. Really? Okay. T.J. Logan, he was a powerhouse back, especially going out in Northern. Uh, every time you tackled him, it's, you have to make sure you grabbed him good in order to bring him down because if you didn't, he's breaking free. And yeah. he's one of those guys where – He's he's something special. I saw him play a little bit last Thursday here at Shane's. They were in that game against uh, Miami. And it's interesting now how T.J. Logan at the next level, there were times in high school he didn't have to break too many tackles. He got past that defensive line. At the next level, he pops around the linebackers. Boom, he's gone. Kyle, yes, he's having to break a few tackles, a little bit different type running approach. Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, if he doesn't do great things at Carolina, I don't know I don't know who will. He, he's a good guy. And I, I, hope, I hope the best for him. I hope the best for all the guys we play against. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I always like the. That's why I like to follow you guys in the high school level. It's fun to see what the guys do when they move on to college, yes, and even onto the pros. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because we got so many Guilford County kids that are out there playing football. Football is almost getting to the point where it's surpassing basketball in some ways by the amount of talent that Guilford County is turning out. Yes, sir. Got DJ Reader at Clemson watching on, oh, trying to watch him on TV some last Saturday night in that big game against Florida yes, State. Sir. Watching those guys. Yes, sir. It's it's insane. Guilford County is a great. A great place to be in, especially for athletics and uh, football. Is really, especially, especially in the Piedmont Triad, 4A. We have some powerhouse yeah. teams and. You've got have. three teams up at the top as good as any teams around. Yes, sir. You look at High Point Central, I think they're 5-3. and three, but They don't look anything like a 5-3 and three team at all. Oh, no, not at all. They, they were a great team to play against. And and it's just it's just awesome the way we're playing this year. And hopefully we can keep it going, keep the momentum on our side. Who's, who's your favorite college team other than Brevard? Got a favorite college football team? College team, I, I'm a big-time fan of Carolina. Okay. Love Carolina. you got about three of your guys out of the four that are big Carolina. Of fans. Yes, sir. I uh, grew up on them. I love them, but, uh, you know, Brevard's now where it's at. I got you. Have you been to any Brevard games this year? Actually, I haven't. I, uh, with football, it's been it's been kind of hard to, but hopefully I can sneak up there one Saturday and catch a game. I think they've got – your teammate, Mark Murphy, has the Liberty top on. I think Brevard is playing Liberty late in the season this year, too. Yes, sir. Maybe close into the schedule. I check on Liberty's lineup occasionally. I'm looking over the website, internet, checking those guys out, but they have a big matchup coming up. What about a favorite professional team? Professional team, I love the Carolina Panthers. Gosh, okay. You know, hopefully we can pull out that win tonight. It's a big game tonight because they're playing the 0-16. You guys, if you guys go in a game, say you're 8-0 like you are right now, you went up against a team that's like, say, 0-7. It's one of the scariest games you'll have. <laughs> yes, sir. You, teams have a tendency to take, they look at, the, look at the record and don't take the team as serious as they should. Yes, sir. And I, I feel this year we've done a very good job with playing the way we're capable of, even if they're they're not having a great year. That had to be tough against Ragsdale, too, because you played Ragsdale in the past. Going back to Matt Pulaski's senior year, it was always a big game. I remember covering that game by broadcast that year. It was just a huge turning point win for Northwest that season. But you face a Ragsdale team this year coming into the game, only got like a couple of wins. It's got to yes, be sir. tougher to take them a little more serious than you have in the past. You yes, can't sir. overlook these teams. Oh, definitely not. And um, I think, like I said, we, we're doing a really good job staying focused, no matter who we're playing and just doing whatever we can to get the win that week. And you think about it too, you've got to be careful. You got Glenn tomorrow night coming up. Yes, sir. But then you try you got Southwest the next week. That could also fall into that category of the uh, football describers call the trap game. Yes, sir. Because with East Forsyth after that, I mean you got to be careful. Yes, sir. I, I think we're all focused. We all have a goal and that's to win each game one week at a time. And especially since we're in the driver's seat of the conference title, we, we know how important these games are and I don't think we'll take them lightly. Do the senior leaders, uh, yourself included, kind of get around 
the rest of the team and try to draw these guys together yes, and kind sir. of reinforce how important these games are? Yes, sir, we do. And uh, I, I know they know how important these games are as well. And I, I know they want to win as badly as we do. Who's on the tribal council as far as those senior leaders go, yourself included? Who are some of those key men that have to step up and occasionally have to rattle the cages of the uh, younger players? Let's keep this thing in order. Hampton Billups, our tight end, is our is our vocal leader. He's the leader. man. Huh? It's kind of he, interesting, too, because you think about Hampton. You guys don't throw the ball a lot. You're very good running teams. He may yes, not sir. see the ball in quite a cage. He's also a big basketball player. But yes, he's sir. like the leader, the vocal leader. He is the vocal leader. If something's going wrong, he will be the first one to say something about it. He will be the one to get in your face and make sure that you change what you're doing and be and be a contributor to the team. And he, he's a great guy, a great Christian guy, and I love him to death. And, and you think about the class work at Northwest. Do you have a favorite teacher, favorite uh, oh, man. study line over the years? God. My favorite teacher, I have to say, is Dr. Thomas, uh, the Earth and Environment teacher he, he's just been a great influence in my life um, he we talk literally every day I'm not in this class this year I was last year we talk every day just about life that's how good to have that kind of influence that kind of person you can go talk to in it yes sir definitely you like the coaches and the teachers that after it's all over you can still go talk to that person even yes. down the road in the years to come yes and it's, it's good at Northwest we have kind of the family aspect mm -hmm. where even if you're not a part of Northwest anymore after you graduated it's still technically you're you're part of a family, which I love. That big uh, Northwest Viking community, right? Yes, sir. Who'd you play the uh, youth football for? Were you part of Stokesdale Oak Ridge? Actually, Summerfield. I've never played youth football. I go straight into middle school. Yeah. I uh, I told my mom I, I was like, hey, uh, I want to try out for for Nor uh, for Cornell Middle, and she's she was kind of iffy about it. Like, uh, I don't know, I don't want you getting hurt. But uh, I tried out and made the team. I didn't play much in middle school and then high school rolls around and, and I, you're on the I varsity in the ninth grade yes sir wow so you were with coach bell and the guys at Cronodo back in the eighth grade yes sir I was just that one year uh, I was uh, seventh and eighth grade, grade, year, grade but, uh, yeah I didn't see the field that much but I learned a lot about the game and you didn't uh, let that lack of playing time hinder your no, chances for the future then no sir not at all good deal good deal Again, with us, Christian Dix, Northwest Guilford, football and baseball. And what about Coach Woodruff? What have you learned from him over the years? going to take you with you down the road. There's so much I've learned, and he's taught me everything there is to know about the game, everything good that you need to know about the game in order to be a successful, not only football player, but a successful person in life. That's good stuff to carry with you. Yes, sir, definitely. What about uh, the dream of practicing on Thanksgiving morning? I mean, if I were a little kid, to me, a football player, that was seem to be about as big as some little kid on Christmas morning. Yes, sir, definitely. It would be it would be an honor to practice on Thanksgiving morning, giving thanks to, to everything, to God, to to my family, but especially playing a sport that I love you know, being, with my teammates. And being that successful at it, too. Yes, sir. Yeah, the way things look, you guys hang in there. I mean, gosh, who knows what your record would be if you reach that far. You just want to get that far. Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, one week at a time. Just take take every game like it's your last. Here's what I'll ask you. If I get a chance, I'll ask Coach Woodruff this too. Do you want to play a team in the playoffs first round, a team from down around Richmond County or maybe a team from down around Charlotte? Who do you want to go against first in the opening part of a playoff hey, situation? I think if, especially if we play at home, in order to be the best, we need to beat the best. Yeah. So if we beat the best early, it just shows how good we are and how far we should go. And you guys did that what, either last year or a couple of years ago. You beat Richmond County one of the top yes, sir. teams. Well, yeah, we went down to Richmond County. Uh, everyone projected us losing by a good margin. And we come out, play our game the way we know how to, and and win. And it, it, was a, it was a good one for us. What's it going to take for Christian Dix and the Northwest Guilford Vikings to uh, continue this win? winning run tomorrow night against Glenn. Just stay focused and be together. You know, we, we can't let distractions get the best of us. We we have to stay together as a whole and just play our game. You guys still hit the
the Cornerstone Baptist Church for the meal before the game on Fridays? Uh, or is that no, just home sir. Games? Uh, no, sir. We actually have Branched our, out. Yeah, we we now eat at our at our cafeteria this year. School cafeteria. Yes, sir. We just yeah. it's more it's closer. It's it's more. We don't have to drive anywhere. For the chance of getting mm -hmm. in a wreck or anything. So it's, that's a it's, good point. It's, yeah. it's we're we're that's, already there. Back when I was a know? kid, that's what we did too. But we only ate those team meals for away games. We hit the school cafeteria. They had some kind of meal planned out, whatever. What's been the biggest play of your football career at Northwest? Maybe it came this year. Maybe it came in previous yes, years. Biggest play ever for you? Uh, this year, uh, I forced the fumble on Pratt. That was it. Yeah, yes, we sir. talked about that with the other guys already. And it, it was just it was just a big honor for me. It was it was awesome knowing that we won the game based on that play. You forced it again. Who recovered it, Murphy? I think Mar Mark Murphy did. Yes, he sir. Got the cover. Gotcha, gotcha. Is that something they teach a lot of? How to go ahead and knock that ball out? And is yes, that sir. something? I mean, I'm thinking of as a tackler. There's got to be a certain uh, percentage level there somewhere. I'm going to try to knock it out, but I've also got to make think about making a tackle at the same time. Yes, How sir. How do you draw that line there? We actually do a couple drills in practice where it's called two man in or second man in drill, where the first guy wraps up and drives his feet the way you're supposed uh -huh. to do the it, guy comes in. and then the second guy comes in and rips the ball out. So the then, guy that knocks it out is not as concerned about having to make the tackle as right. finishing off things and knocking it out. Right. Yes, sir. Hmm, that's and interesting. Yes. Learn something new because when I was a younger player, we didn't do much of the uh, trying to knock the ball out stuff. I wish we had. That would have been fun. Trying to strip it out. And yes, just, sir. You ever try to get one of those bear wrestling, a bear hug things, trying to <laughs> strip it away from the guy like that? Or just, you use your technique, I guess, for the most part. Technique for the most part. It, but if it's everybody's pursuing to the ball, then you can have you can have a couple people trying to get the ball and get it back on your side. But uh, you know, for the most part, just technique. And Going to Brevard next year, Christian Dix with us, Northwest Gopher Vikings. What do you do between the end of football season and the beginning of the baseball season? And is there an end of football? Is there a beginning of the baseball? Is it all coming together? How's that work? No, sir. Uh, once football season's over, we have a, I have a little bit of a break between when baseball starts. But once football's over, I start going into baseball workouts. I do a lot of band workouts to strengthen my arm to make sure it's good for this year, to make sure you know no injuries come. And so I Especially this year, I'm gonna very. I'm gonna focus heavily on my arm to make sure it's strong and ready to go. What are you bat in the uh, lineup? What spot? I bat fourth. You're the cleanup, cleanup. man. Yes, sir. More, th more than one year. Or just started that last year. Uh, last year I played varsity for the first time. Well, I played a little half and half my sophomore year, mm -hmm. but uh, first year starter last year, and I batted fourth um, the whole year. And I think football has really helped with that getting stronger, mm -hmm. especially for that spot because I, I mean, I think I have power. I can hit the ball, but I can also get on base if you need me to. Who's been the big role model for you? I'll maybe make this. We could talk with Christian Dix all night because he's got football and baseball on his plate, and he's got his plate here at Shane's to go with it. Who's been the big role model over the years? Gosh, my dad has. He's he's the one that got me into baseball, and for football, I kind of got myself into it because uh, they they didn't really want me playing, but uh, now they they love it. But uh, my dad has really helped me with baseball and has been there from the beginning. Do you uh, go to some of the uh, workout centers, batting centers, and uh, if you have like a cage built in your backyard to train in, that type of thing? Uh, we, we have uh, one of those nets that we put up in the backyard sometimes, and uh, usually I, I'd go to Prolific Park. And You're a prolific, man, because I know practice. a lot of kids will go over with Scott Bankhead, some go to Prolific, some go with Alan Ashkenazi. I mean, people go yes, everywhere sir. these days. A lot of opportunities out there. Yes, sir, definitely. And uh, Ricky Prohl has been a great influence uh, for me as well. He's uh, He was my baseball coach for a while as well. Wow, when you were younger? Uh, three years ago, yes, sir. Wow, Ricky, the football man, was also your baseball. Yes, sir. That's a good influence to have out there. Oh, definitely. He was. Uh, he pointed me in the right direction with baseball. He knew contacts and he knew what to do and how to get to the next level, which r was really important to me as well. You ever rub any elbows, hang out with his son Austin Prohl? Oh, yes. Austin's a great a great friend of mine. Uh, he lives up in Charlotte now, though, so I don't get to see him that much, but I know he committed to Carolina, and I know that he's going to do great things once he's in college as well. Christian, good to talk to you, man. I could talk good to you to all talk day to you, long. Sir. Super job. Thank you, Good sir. luck in that game tomorrow night. Good luck the rest of the year. Thank you, sir. Christian Dix with us here at uh, Shane's Rib Shack.